You're listening to The Raw Reaction on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. If I'm OJ, here is my AC Al Cowlings. I'm talking about Big Dick. This is Angry Tensai. Welcome to Raw Reaction. Big Dick, what's going on, buddy? Not too much, brother. Much like OJ and the Denver Broncos, we know the best defense is a good offense. So right. OJ, OJ learned that many years ago, and Carolina learned it this weekend. AC was down with OJ. He, he um... Dro- drove him off to the races. <laughs> Who could forget those days? How you no, doing? That was, a, that was a magical Friday evening for, for me. It was, man. How you doing? You're doing good, man. I'm actually in the uh, I'm, I'm in God's country for uh, the last d- d- day or so, and for the next couple of hours, uh, God's country being Bayville, New Jersey, the home of Grumpy's Pub, the home of the super high class Water's Edge, the home of the Infamous dinosaur, and the home is Mace's going out of business furniture store. That's right. Well, then we have big since 1996. Hell yeah, we have big news this week. Well, specifically today, we also have with us um, behind the glass our producer extraordinaire Killikev. We'll, we'll get his take on this too. The big news tonight on Raw um, is the retirement of Daniel Bryan and it appears we're only getting bits and pieces of the story, but it sounds like he was not medically cleared by the WWE and they will not give him his release. Therefore his contract is permanently frozen since he can't compete. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I don't, and like you said, I mean, I don't think we're getting the whole story. I mean, they ran the angle today. Um, I think, it's, I think they sort of did a good job of this, of getting in front of, okay, it was announced today, leading up to his hometown, so they did a good job of getting in front of it to draw viewers in and be up front, but it's not, it doesn't feel like anywhere nearly as coordinated as the, uh, like the Ed retirement back, uh, I think it was two years ago, right after WrestleMania, the neck injury where it was as permanent. I mean, it almost, I almost felt like there could be, they could be leaving up in some sort of an angle were to have a swerve and maybe a retirement match at WrestleMania or something along those lines. But um, as far as all the reports I've seen, I heard it's pretty much a done deal that he's retiring. Yeah, I kind of knew that today because it was going to ESPN tomorrow. So I was kind of like, okay, so it's it's legitimate. And it it was picked up by all the publications too. So you kind of know when that hits mainstream media, they really can't play around with it. But, um, you know, I I, kind of have... um, I wouldn't even say mixed emotions on it. I think the Benoit thing and the Edge retirement really allow sets up a situation where people will be acceptant of him retiring. Um, in fact, Edge knew leading up to WrestleMania the risks of his of his neck injury, and he actually went out there, risked literally his life. And wrestled that match at WrestleMania, which I think is in, in, which is insane, and the fact that he still entertained and he still defended that world title and and walked out with it, and I mean that was amazing. But you know, under, understanding Daniel Bryan still wants to get back in the ring despite the risks, as we're hearing, it sounds like that won't be the case. Um, but I will say a heartfelt message tonight. The crowd was clearly behind him. He brought out his wife, Brie Bella, as well at the very end. You know, it was it was a, emotional for him, clearly. It was great that he got to do that at home, but I, I think this is the real deal, and I think at least in a WWE ring, we won't see him again. Yeah, yeah, I mean, who knows? Maybe uh, maybe get him in a TNA match with Kurt Angle. They're going to be complete train wrecks against one another. But um, I think that, uh, I mean, I think this is good because WWE obviously have 
have the problem of uh, older wrestlers dying prematurely. So I think that this is uh, being able to put together uh, almost a fairy tale retirement is uh, yes. the best option that you have. You know, you make a good point. I mean, in fact, you can YouTube Dead Wrestler Beach, which is a song somebody created about all the wrestlers that have died. And it's almost comedic in nature, but it's kind of cool at the same time because it gives respect to all the different wrestlers that have passed. Now, um, Kill a Kev, you're on the air with us tonight. Any thoughts on the Daniel Bryan piece? Um, I think this is about the best route to go because... You know, it, it's kind of interesting you mentioned WWE having to get ahead of the story. I didn't really think about that until I read earlier this afternoon. Dave Meltzer kind of blew all this up inadvertently. Um, he, he revealed on a chat room over the weekend that Daniel Bryan actually tried to get his release and was informed that legally he couldn't ask for one. And... Somebody went and found a copy of Stephanie McMahon's performance contract, which, because she's an officer with the company, has to be, those contracts have to be made public. And looking through it, uh, her contract, it looks like it's standard boilerplate, uh, language for the wrestlers. And it basically says that, uh, no, he doesn't get a right to ask. Um, he can't ask for his release, but WWE can choose to release him at any time for any reason, or they can mutually agree to separate, but he can't go to them and say, okay, I'm done. I'm out of here. He, he, he's, uh, his contract is locked in. So I'm not, I'm not surprised by all this though. I mean, really what I think of this is I think WWE learned their lesson with Kurt Angle. And they're not going to let that situation play out again where a wrestler has the potential to continue doing what they do and in the process hurting themselves. WWE got a lot of bad press once Kurt Angle walked away and continued to wrestle, even though he and everybody else knew just how damaged his neck was. And, you know, while that wasn't WWE's fault, um, a lot of bad PR came back their way because of it. And I think that's kind of what they're trying to avoid here. They're just trying to, to have this best case scenario. Um, you know, quite honestly, he's had enough con- concussions, the neck thing, the arm thing. Um, he's too damaged a wrestler. Um, you know, so they can't continue to let him to wrestle, but Will they pay him permanently. Yeah. I mean, they still have, they still have to pay him. He, he's got a downside gar- contract guarantee. That they absolutely have to pay out on. The only thing that's kind of controversial right now is it appears that they're kind of doing the same thing to him as what they did with Rey Mysterio, where Rey Mysterio uh, couldn't perform because he kept getting hurt and his rehab kept getting delayed. So what Vince McMahon did was essentially freeze his contract. Um, the time didn't start running down until he started coming back to performing for the company again. But with this... You know, I don't know what they're going to do because apparently the company has offered him, you know, come back and, and do some announcing or, or goodwill stuff. And he's like, no, I don't want to do any of that. I just want to wrestle. Um, and I, I really think that's dumb on his part. He, he should have been reading the political tea leaves here long ago and figured out that he's not coming back as a wrestler. So just do whatever you got to do with the company to run down the clock. Your contract expires, get out of there. And if you, you know, if in a year, two years, three years, you feel like you still want to go wrestle, go wrestle. But in the meantime, rest, let your body heal up, you know, do whatever goofy things, go be an announcer, go work on commentary, go work on on the pre-show panel, Um, go film, you know, a a movie, go film another episode of Total Divas, Um, challenge John Cena and Flo Rida to a, rap battle on wwe records you know do something with productive with your time rest your body and and when your contract is done go back to ring of honor or go to new japan or you know don't go to tna please don't go to tna but go go elsewhere and just just ride your time out yeah well said i mean i i think i think here you know if he really wants to to get back into it he definitely didn't go down the right route um it, I mean, I, I would, I would have to believe there has to be a way 
a retirement would it would invoke a release of a contract, wouldn't you? I mean, there has to be something. No, I mean, because he can he he's not contracted to wrestle. He's contracted to perform. Right. And that doesn't have to be wrestling. It could be it could be in any role. Um, I mean, hell, he could be a goodwill ambassador, go out to WWE house shows and, and do meet and greets and, you know, you know, just travel the road, do do make a wishes, you know, meet with fans. You just travel and have fun. Yeah, I actually was was wondering if he was going to try and have undertones to try and turn the crowd against WWE, but he didn't do that at all. Uh oh. Yeah that 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 would be uh, probably uh, career suicide. But why? Not if you're not can resuming your career. Yeah, you, you don't bite the hand that feeds you. True, true. I mean, and, and really, you're dealing with Vince McMahon. You know the, you know for for a lot of the bad things that that people will say about Vince McMahon and how the company is ran. There's just so many wrestlers who say that really Vince McMahon just kind of wants to be your friend. More than anything. And, you know, business is business, but, uh, you know, aside from the business, he, he's a very genuine and warm person. And when you're not dealing with the business specifically, you know, he values those relationships. So, you know, there's no reason to burn that bridge when it's unnecessary because you never know. I mean, in five years, Vince McMahon or by that time, it might be Triple H, you know, may absolutely have a change of heart, the 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 winds have changed direction and there's a place for him again, but there's not going to be a place for him. If you know, you piss off the bosses by trying to turn, turn this into a political angle on live TV in a way well, that's going to hurt the company. Right. Well said. Well, you know, maybe just maybe he is injured to the point where WWE is doing him an absolute favor. You know what I mean? So he can go resume his life. And he's not crippled or or permanently injured. So, you know what? Daniel Bryan had a great career and um, nothing to be ashamed of, for sure. And I'm sure we haven't seen the last of him, maybe not in a wrestling capacity, but I, I do think we will see a lot more of him. So, big, big, big development tonight. Another big development, Kill a Cabin Big Dick. Sonny's video is released this week. Sonny Side Up. Any thoughts? Kill a cab. Vic, any thoughts? Oh boy. This is terrible. <laughs> How does this keep happening? I don't want to know. Um, well, good for Sonny. Um, I, I saw the trailer a few weeks ago. Um, <laughs> um, it looked like standard fare to me. I mean, I, I don't know if there's anything special about it. Um, the, the, it'll probably kill any guy's fantasy at this point if they still had any left. I actually saw the video. Oh, uh, really? Yes, I did. And um, what I didn't realize is there's actually two different scenes within it. Okay. With two, di- with two different workers. So she works two different guys. Well, that that doesn't sound surprising. Well, don't you feel like... Th- didn't you think it was just going to be like a, a one and done? I was surprised they brought in two different stunts. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not, I'm not surprised. I, I figure, I figured that there would probably be two individual scenes with two different guys and then like a gangbang at the end or something. I, lo- I like that they use two different guys. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of typical. I mean, did you ever see any of China's videos? <laughs> no. You see, I, I watch the first one she did. I mean, not, not, not. <laughs> not, not the one with the X-Pac. I mean, the, the, the first actual professional one she did. I actually thought that was kind of mm. nice. The last one she did where she did, did the, the wrestling parody where she parodied everybody in, in WWE. Um, that, that was kind of, uh, that was kind of cheesy, kind of bad. Um, she's not getting into the Hall of Fame, no. So you think it, you think it's bad to have relations with eight different people at the same time on, on video? No, no, I, I, I don't think that's necessarily bad. I think it's bad when they're all portraying <laughs> World Wrestling Federation characters. You gotta drop that line, man. I got, I gotta drop that line. You gotta drop the phone line. I gotta drop, I gotta drop that beat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Hang on a second. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> man 
Mm-hmm. He's, Good show. What what is it beyond what is it when you're beyond three sheets to the wind? I mean, I I don't understand why this keeps happening. You know, I'm I'm not I'm not going to say anything mm-hmm. bad about Vic this week. He had a hard weekend. Um, kind of an emotional weekend, so I'm, we're we're gonna cut him a break. We're gonna cut Big Vic from the show. What happened to him? Um, I, I guess he just had. Uh, oh, his buddy. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So was like, this is like the anniversary of it. So anyway, good thing. Good thing we we've got somebody standing by to step right in. James Junior. It's Seth Draken, actually. <laughs> What's up, Seth? How you doing? Not buddy? much. Um, honestly, um, I did watch this Raw. <laughs> this is, you actually got me lucky. I watched a Raw. I broke the band, but just for one night. <laughs> did you almost wind up like Big Dick? Asleep? Nope. <laughs> better, no. better than ending up like Axel Rotten. No, I actually, it was, I actually did have Raw in the background so I could, uh, play really, uh, a game called Freedom Planet. Oh, jeez. Well, honestly, Seth, this is a big, a big week in wrestling. Do, what do you consider the most provocative story? Do you consider it being Axel Rotten dropping dead outside of a McDonald's with a bag of cheeseburgers? Sonny in two different scenes doing God knows what or Daniel Bryan's retirement? Bryan's retirement. Um, the other two, um, as much as uh, Axel Rotten's was never really was ECW guy. Um, Unfortunately, yeah, while well, he is legendary, and Sonny's probably, it's just Sonny at this point. Sonny's yeah. really the low one, probably the one that really doesn't matter. The Matt. Sonny's legendary all in her own special way. I wish it was 1997 Sonny in these videos. Yeah, although I, I don't I don't know. I, I, I kind of like my women a little older. Yeah, but man, she's hit the wall, bro. I mean, hit the wall. Well, she, she's pretty much the epitome of road hard and hung up wet. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong? You know who she looks like now? Somebody that Ambrose would get with. <laughs> I love Ambrose, by he, the way. He man. would master the fuck out of those titties. <laughs> Ambrose is the man. Ambrose probably is the best character in WWE by far. And tonight kind of solidified the brilliance of Ambrose when he he literally got beat down in that impromptu contract signing um, and got F5 and was so upset that he went out, called out Brock Lesnar, said that said Paul Heyman holds his balls in a purse. I mean, he went off and then he proceeded to get his ass beat by Brock Lesnar and kept wanting more. It was great. It's just Ambrose, man. Ambrose does not care. He called the F5 the F2. Why do you, why are you calling the F5 the F2? Because I thought the F5 is supposed to hurt, so it must be the F2. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. I'm loving Ambrose right now. I, you think there's any chance he can walk out with the number one contender spot? I don't think so, but I would love to say it. No takers on that? You know what this kind of reminds me of? I, I'm monologuing to myself right now because Seth is nowhere to be found and Kev went and got a hamburger. This reminds me of the early Ring the Bells. It's so bad that it's good. That's going to be raw reaction. We used to be a reputable show, and now, now I'm speaking to an echo. Well, I mean, you know, it's raw. I mean, it, you know, it, it's not a very good show at the moment. If you're, mm-hmm. you're heading into WrestleMania, and, and I mean, this is just some dreadful stuff. Do you think Raw could wind up on Pop TV? No, USA will keep them. Uh, Skype must have dropped me then. I yeah. was saying stuff. I was, I, yeah, we didn't hear you. I was saying, do you think Raw will wind up on Pop TV? Um, Raw's not going to wind up on Pop TV, first of all. Except USA- you Pop TV, I do not. It's not even an option. <laughs> well, it's an option for me, so that's a good you, news. You actually can watch it. Oh, yeah. Can Poland watch it, too? Can Poland, I'm sure he can watch it too, yeah. Well, you guys cover the show, so I mean, are you guys... Yeah. I actually, like, literally, there's no package I can buy that would have it. I don't know. I mean, it used to be the TV Guide channel, if your cable really doesn't have TV Guide, so... Well, what I've noticed is that some cable companies recently 
bump that up to a digital tier. Oh off yeah, the basic, which kind of sucks. Oh yeah, it does. Maybe I'm not looking hard enough. I must have it. What what cable company you got? Comcast. Yeah. I'm oh, I sure, have it. I'm pretty sure you've got it. I mean, I've, I've got it. Haven't had the urge to find T and I. Yeah, I have it on HD. I have the Pop TV HD version, so I get to watch the stupid shit in HD. Who's their champion? Uh, Matt Hardy. Oh, jeez, really? <laughs> yes, <laughs> really. He, Matt, Matt Hardy's a heel. <laughs> he just had a match with Kurt Angle that I told Kev was fucking horrible. He's still around? Who, Angle? Yeah, yeah Angle's going to retire soon, so uh, yeah, he's doing a retirement tour. What a waste. They already taped his last match, but uh, yeah, oh. it'll be... It'll be they showing up. Everything. Well, no, they just take their English show, so England. So why wouldn't they literally get all their creative ideas and just do a year to two years worth of taping? Well, because then you get the shit like uh, what happened <laughs> with the, the world title series. That's why you don't do that. <laughs> what because with the world title because series? It, because by the time they finally get to airing an episode, like three fourths of the guys have already shown up on NXT. Or they're or they're elsewhere, <laughs> like freaking like freaking uh, Kenny King. He's in Ring of Honor, but he's still wrestling in TNA on TV. Oh man, that's bad. <laughs> oh. Or the one time James Storm was wrestling on TNA, but he was also on wrestling on NXT. So and yeah, and, back. And don't forget, Tommaso Ciampa did the same thing. Oh yeah, Tommaso Ciampa did the same thing. <laughs> so yeah, it's just just. That's why they don't do that shit because it really, it really does. It's, it is cost effective, but there are so many ways that can go wrong. Um, just ask WCW why they had to do live TV. Tonight, just, Mick Foley wins the world championship. Yeah, that'll put butts in seats. Uh, ask the, no, that wasn't the problem. WCW had, would do that, like have like months and months of tapings and like, it Starcade ninety three is a perfect example. Uh the original plan and they even taped it is for <laughs> Sid Vicious to win the world title over Vader. They were gonna have a Sid Vicious versus Vader feud, and Sid was gonna win the title, but then in England Sid attacked Arn Anderson with scissors and got fired, so they had to change plans. That's not good. Oh no. Oh no, that's why you don't do that shit. You have stupid shit like that happening. Well, you know what? TNA, it's just, it's a, it's a great show. I mean, we're so lucky to have it. I mean, Dixie Carter, I mean, what, what resolve that she's just driving the sinking ship and she's able to keep a smile and actually keep trying. It's pretty admirable. She has a never say die attitude, a real can do attitude. She's smiling because she doesn't really pay these people much money. Unless she and the people who are getting paid the big money are normally are people who are leaving the company like whose contracts. Although Jeff Hardy just freaking resigned. So good thing she resigned Jeff Hardy. I mean, he would have been the hottest free agent in the industry. I mean, who doesn't want a washed up druggie that can't can't do mic work? I know. And they so, yeah, that's that's probably how they got. Why they put Matt Hardy as the title so they could get Jeff Hardy At back? Least Matt Hardy can talk. The other one can't. Who Matt? Yeah. Well, yeah. Matt Hardy's like I am iconic. <laughs> oh God, no! He's doing an iconic gimmick where he's talking about his brand and stuff, and his he's like got freaking <laughs> the best part. He's got Revy Sky, and he's got Tyrus in his corner, and Tyrus has been demoted to holding the baby. That's just shit. And speaking <laughs> of shit... And, and, is he like on, um, like, Matt 5.0 now? <laughs> I don't know what he is. He's called Iconic Matt Hardy. <laughs> in, a, in a year or two, he can just be Matt Classic. <laughs> what do you guys think of um, the Dudley boys turning heel tonight on the Usos? Um, I thought the way they worked, Mike, I thought it was actually a good idea. Um, I'm worried about the one Uso who seemed kind of injured. Although maybe that was a sell job or something, but when when do the Usos not seem injured anymore? No, the one I, I forget which one it was, but one of them seemed really injured, like they they really stopped it. Can I throw something out there to you, Seth? And maybe your timing is in, is 
for a reason. Mm-hmm. You have heel Dudleys. You have Doc Gallows coming back to the WWE. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't do the unthinkable, would they? No, they wouldn't. No, they, they've seen, they've seen the, how the aces and eights went. And they saw how much of a piece of shit it was. Aces, I am the only person who liked the aces and eights angle. I actually thought it was really good. I, I thought aces and eights was pretty damn good too. It, it was some of the best awesome. stuff they did in years. I thought it was awesome. The aces and eights like always got the better, better of everything and, I actually thought they were going to take control. Uh, they didn't always get the better of everything. Like, they got beat up by Sting and Hulk Hogan. I thought like, the 15-minute initial fight was the best fight ever. That was an awesome segment. That was one of my favorite segments in wrestling ever. They, they These guys with masks just kept coming and coming. And oh, yeah. all the faces and heels of DNA were fighting alongside each other. Oh, yeah, it was a good idea at the time. Um just so many things went wrong with it, like putting Mr. Anderson with them. Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> no, there were so many things. Why, just... why were they in a clubhouse? Like, where was it? <laughs> it was a clubhouse because they they watched Sons of Anarchy, like I've said. <laughs> it's obvious they watched Sons of Anarchy. Dude, I and they're just basically said. aping it. I did what you said. I played, I went to YouTube, I played the first 15 seconds of the vocal Aces and Eights. Mm-hmm. And then I had set up the first 15 seconds of the Sons of Ar- Anarchy theme. It's the same fucking theme. That's, I know, it is. Like, do 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 I love that shit. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so, uh, so are we going to talk WWE Raw tonight or what? Oh, I'm we talking, are. I said about the Dudley Boys turn. That was a big surprise. Yeah, um, and then we spend five more minutes about T. Tea- <laughs> <laughs> We talk. Do you realize we've uh, we've already been on the air twenty nine minutes, and usually Impact Implosion is already over by now. <laughs> well, that we've is already... true, Brian. Well, the Dudleys, the Dudleys, in my opinion, I really hope this leads them not jobbing. Like they can actually like be reputable again. Mm, yeah, you know seems, what I mean. Seems Bubba Ray. Uh, he did the. Do you know who we are and stuff? So. Which, it was his Bully Ray gimmick of, do you know who I am? <laughs> I want to see that. I want to see that. Yeah, I think that would be a good idea is to get Bully Ray to, uh... Because he is a good Mike guy. If they use him as Bully Ray, he could be, like, the top guy. Honestly, I'm not kidding around. If he if he can do what he did in TNA, and he's not as heavy as he was, like, in his last WWE run, he could easily lose 10 or 15 pounds, get in Bully Ray shape, and he would be the man again. I mean, I think I would love to see that. It'd be cool. And if he if he could bring back the the awesome Cavs gimmick, that that would just be right over the Capzilla. top. Or, I'm on my Twitter machine. I'm on my Twitter machine. <laughs> honestly, he could do all that because no, honestly, and I'm not making a joke. No one saw it. I mean, you could reuse a lot of that shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you could. You I could. think Bully Ray's heel run was the best TNA TV. Like ever, and I think WWE fans would like it. I think they'd enjoy it. I think people like Bubba Ray, and I think people want to see him do well. And I think it would be cool. So you know, we'll see where they go with it. Um, I, I the divas, the divas division tonight. I think this Brie Bella match is just a placeholder because they just don't want to waste the Sasha Charlotte match for a shitty pay per view, and they want to they're save doing, it. Yeah, and I think they're doing Daniel Bryan a favor by giving Brie Bella one more shot. There's no way she wins. No, no way. No, she's not. She's not. It, the pay per view's just Bree's gonna get uh, Charles gonna get her win back. Yep. And then that's that. And and Sasha Banks will win the world title at 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 the world Man. title. You mean What's the that? Divas title? I mean that's same thing. butterfly belt. <laughs> She'll win the butterfly belt. Yeah. What was the belt? <clears throat> Ciara used to talk about one of the the female federations had like a big. A big giant belt that you couldn't wear. I have no idea. I don't even remember that. We we need we need Ciara back. I'm actually into to women's wrestling now, and I never was previously. I know. Yeah, yeah. You actually see some really good stuff. Um, pro- sadly, TNA really has like really killed their women's division, and Awesome Kong's gone. So yes, which is pretty awesome. Well, I think um, you know, with with the Divas division. 
you know, all the all the girls left can work. Even the worst girls. Well, I take that back. The ones that are on TV, like Cameron. Tamita, freaking one tonight. What the? I was like, but Tamita's all right. She can work. I mean, she's a good wrestler. I know. I was just like, I didn't, I didn't expect Becky Lynch to job to Tamita tonight. I was like, well, what? you know, they, they. I like to see real athletes. You look at Tamina, she's absolutely jacked. Oh, she and is, yeah. You look at Charlotte, and I was looking at Charlotte, I mean, in, in a way, and I'm, I mean, I'm not insulting her because I think she's a great athlete, but she's so boxy, she kind of is built like a man. You know, oh, she, she is. You know, oh, she's, but, she but is. I have no problem with that. If they're athletically gifted, put them out there. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And like, <clears throat> it's okay to have somebody be like eye candy that can't wrestle, like, if they can add value to the show, like Eva Marie's heel gimmick is so awesome and so over that, like, that's great. That's great TV. When she comes well, up, what's that? I say, oh, some of it, it can, it can work in so- small doses. I don't think you can really do Eva Marie as a world, as a Divas champion or women's champion too long. It would have to be a transitional belt champion. Yeah. But she will get that that heat. I mean, she oh, she gets yeah. the heat definitely. <clears throat> but it's more Xbox heat, sadly. I wonder why she's so hated. She, she can't really wrestle. Um, they've tried, <laughs> especially if you've watched NXT. Sometimes she's been terrible. She uses the sliced red number two. Well, yeah, she uses the sliced bread. I know, but there's been moments no, where no, she's no, no, the sliced red number two. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There's been moments like the uh, whole um, the moment where she uh, did not kick out of a pin attempt, and the refs like, "Oh, she kicked out," and she didn't. Or missing, obviously missing a kick, but the athlete still falls for it, and people have to go, "What was that?" You know what I'm looking forward to, Seth, when she gets on the road. Uh, you know she's gonna stray. Uh, who knows? <laughs> The boys will not be able to pass her up on the ro- the road, and it'll break up her her little marriage, and that's gonna happen. Mark my yeah, word. That's the sad part. Yeah. That's what happens, man. John Cena, bro. <laughs> Cena's yeah. Hold of her. Well, to be fair, Cena's got his own girlfriend, so he he's fine. She won't be on the road, man. What if like love brings 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 Brie Bella and John Cena together? Because think about it. Nikki Bella's oh. career could be over. Oh God, that would be terrible. I, I think I don't think Brie Bella would fall for Cena. I don't think she's. I don't. I, I think she's more of a. She is. She and Daniel Bryan are kind of perfect. They're kind of vegan kind of situation where they're really that kind of maybe hippie cult subculture. Yeah. That so yeah, I think that's more of a fit for them. Well, you know they're gonna both be lonely on the road though, and they're both gonna be there. Maybe she'll just say to John Cena, you can look, but you can't touch. <laughs> well, remember, John Cena's her brother-in-law now. Well, would yeah. technically be her brother-in-law now, so get a little icky. <laughs> Dude, I think one night they're going to be up in the hotel, and they're going to put on Bree's theme music and <laughs> dance in their underwear, and things one thing will lead to another. Uh, actually, you know, the, I, I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if, they take Brie if they take Brie Bella out with the um Charlotte angle because I I don't think Brie's belt is long for this business either. I honestly would like to put the Brie music on, the theme music on, and dance nude in my room. Mm. Literally, of course you would. I, and I would jump. I would jump because you know, being a male, you get that effect. I would be jumping and dancing nude to the Brie Bella theme music. Kev, what do you think of that? Do you like that idea? It's, it's, it's producer. We're the worst producer. He doesn't even listen to the damn show. <laughs> he's got things to do. He's got a family. <laughs> no, he's watching the Sunny video, bastard. <laughs> I wouldn't watch it. I, I don't watch any of those uh, sex tape videos. I'm like, oh, fuck it. <laughs> oh, let me ask you a question, Seth. Why do Kalisto and Alberto Del Rio and Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler fight every single week? Just because, actually, we need to talk about that, that Dolph Ziggler finish. That was kind of stupid. Let's talk about it. And honestly, real quick, though, I was thinking today, these guys just keep trading Matt, trading wins back and forth. Well, not really, bunches of wins, because Owen beat Ziggler like three times in a row, and now and Ziggler then, 
beating him. Beat him two times in a row. Yeah, and, and this one is just... Why not just like seven series, though? Why not just call it that if you're going to have seven friggin' matches? Because they, they really didn't plan that ahead? It's pathetic. They just like, well, I guess we can do this again. They're throwing away good matches with no build. And I oh, hate yeah. It. But just the ending, the Dolph Ziggler cheating, and I'm like... And the, and the commentators are like, well, you got... Owens tried it earlier, so he's... And I'm like, he's a face. Yeah, well, maybe they're trying to straight <clears throat> skew that line with Dolph. Oh, I know. oh and I love how, how obvious Dolph did it, and the refs <laughs> didn't even say it. I'm like... The ref's oh blind, God. man. The ref is blind. Maybe the ref just hates Owens. <clears throat> I know, I'm just, I think they're going to do that as a fast lane match for whatever reason, and Owens gets the win. Yeah, I mean, I guess they're going to probably wrestle again. Oh, of course they're going to. In a super gimmick match, three stages of hell. No, they're not going to do that. They, they, those things are for real athletes. The, re, the real stars of the show get that shit. Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler, eh. If they get a two out of three falls, eh. It's a two out of three falls match. Well, you know, <laughs> you you do know what the um the three stages of hell are, right? Oh, I know what they are. I've seen it. I Duh. can tell you. Stage one is you have to watch an episode of TNA Unpop. Stage two is you have to watch the Westminster Dog Show in its entirety from start to finish. And the final, stage three of hell, is listening to the original Raw reaction hosts of Vic and Angry Tensai going through a whole hour on the air. That, those are the three stages of hell. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, just, just no... Could you, could you imagine them sitting through the seven, six or seven hours of that? Like, you sit there, you gotta go through a whole episode of TNA and all that shit. And then no, like, the oh. final ep- no, the real final stage of hell you have to watch all the Twilight movies in a row. Oh man! After all that, but like, what do you do when you got to sit through the entire dog show, start to finish? That's not <laughs> easy, to do, man. Like everybody likes watching the dog show for like ten minutes. It's kind of cool, but then it's like, okay, well, it's it's not funny anymore. Watching the fat lady run the dog around, like that was funny the first few times. All right, the big dog gets cut all the. The hair comes out. That's funny. The sheep dog comes out. Okay, now this stuff. Now it's not funny anymore. <laughs> so just... mm. We got. We got to get back to raw. Uh, Kalisto and freaking Sin Karsh come back. Sin Cars back against the United. <coughs> oh no, the freaking League of Nations. You think Sin Cara is jealous? <clears throat> Honestly. I wouldn't be surprised if they do Sin Cara versus Kalisto. Oh, no, 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 no. You <laughs> think? I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, God. Honestly, man, I, it's just... I like I like the, I like Hunico as Sin Cara, but I want to see Hunico just be Hunico. Well, that ain't going to happen anymore because Sin Cara sells masks. Yeah, but Sin Cara... Like, that's the gimmick is just like ruined you know yes, what I mean? it's a ruined gimmick but it still sells fucking masks but i mean how many people keep making the botch jokes with sin cara when it's like dude this isn't the, the sin cara that botches this guy actually like this guy still botches though he does yeah have you seen the have you seen the moment where um have you seen the four-way at uh SummerSlam where him and kalisto are trying to get a <laughs> el matador up and they he falls and then or <laughs> There's a moment where Kalisto and uh, Sin Cara go off the top ropes, and Kalisto's able to make it, but Sin Cara's foot hits the <laughs> ropes and he falls over. So yeah, he's awesome. still watching. I love it. I love I love Sin Cara's all of them, all seventy of them. They're like the Vianos. Um, yeah. Uh, what What do you think of um of um Ryback in that ma- I love that ending. How Ryback went for the um the meat hook on Bray Wyatt and Bray Wyatt caught him into the sister Abigail. That oh, was that's, badass. that's nice. That's nice. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Mm, yeah. I've maybe uh, seen Ryback get caught with that into an FU or a okay, I gotta call it an attitude adjustment. I hate doing that. Freaking FU, damn it. 
Well, Bray Wyatt has been unstoppable over the last couple of weeks. I feel like he's dragging out his opponent every single week. Well, obvious. Well, obviously they're gonna they're gonna put him with Lesnar. Well, at WrestleMania, he's gonna be facing Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. So yeah, they got to make Bray look strong. Yes. Yes. Um. I'm trying to think of what else happened tonight. Talk about what else was big tonight. Um. Well, like I said, they're they said set, they're setting up this tag Divas tag team match. Sasha oh, Banks, yeah. and Becky Lynch versus the uh, the other two members of Team Bad. Why why are they gonna? Which which leads me to believe are they gonna do a triple threat with the women's title at WrestleMania? You think? Yes. Uh, I, why does why does Becky Lynch have to be in there? Well, because honestly. She she they like her, and she may be the one who takes the fall. True, but I wouldn't but, you rather see Charlotte one on one with um. I kind of like Becky Lynch a bit. I, I I it's really disappointing that they have not given Becky the belt because they had plenty of times to do it. Yeah, especially when Charlotte was being a dick to her. But no, they just keep having Flair be like <laughs> Flair interfere. I'm waiting for one of the women to knock Flair out. <laughs> I'm just waiting for yeah, wait for Becky Lynch to go outside, hit Flair in the nuts five times. <laughs> yeah, well, and he's that he's out of action. Is there any way Ambrose can beat Lesnar and Reigns? Miracle. Um, Wyatt's take out Lesnar, and uh, after Roman Reigns get got beat up and steals a win, Ambrose gets the win. Wouldn't you, you know? Wouldn't it be more? <clears throat> would would Roman Reigns versus Undertaker be intriguing to anyone? They might, but they're not ready for that yet. They they want to do Braun Strowman versus the Undertaker. Oh, I heard that, bro. Please tell me that's not true. Oh, uh, the news is saying Undertaker's like, oh hell no, <laughs> oh Dude. hell no. Don't you think the crowd would eat that off, like <laughs> shit on it? Oh, well, they would shit on it. <laughs> what? Under, I think Undertaker knows that. I think Undertaker's like, you, you, want me, you want me to go in the ring and try to get a WrestleMania match with this guy? Hell, dude, fuck no. I mean, not I have been my heart on for Braun Strowman. He has been a focal point of the show for the last six months. <laughs> and Kill the Cab for the first four would sit here and defend Strowman as like a force. And even Kill a Cab has backed off that. He's so, a giant Eugene. <laughs> Well, to be giant. to be fair though, I I said he wasn't going to be long for this world. So just en- enjoy it for the brief amount of time it was. Unfortunately, I was wrong on that account. He's got an extended stay, and it's not getting any better. Why does Vince want to put him against Undertaker? That's crazy. Actually, actually, the Braun Strowman versus Undertaker singles match may have been nixed already. Uh, Vince wanted is a fan of Strowman. Vince wanted to do it, but. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, I guess Taker would basically said, oh, hell no. Take, Taker, Taker is crippled, old, no. You want me to, you walking. want me to try to get this guy over? His barely walking, no selling ass. <laughs> well, you, you've heard of the phrase, I'm not as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. Undertaker already kicked his ass. They just fought, like. <laughs> A couple pay per views will go. Kane no, it didn't, the they didn't kick his ass. They they stiff arm clotheslined him out of the ring. That was it. And they put him through a table, dude. Now yeah, that, they did that's, put him through a table. That's they nothing though. Slammed him through a fucking table. That's not. Back. That's nothing. If if Undertaker they legit, his ass. then you got to remember that one raw where they just beat all four Wyatts. If if Undertaker, and then just, if Undertaker, the last one and gets double choke slammed. Dude, when Undertaker and Kane did that, I enjoyed that so much. <laughs> now, but you just expect them to do a sick tag team match, and you're like, what? <laughs> no, really? se- no, seriously. If Undertaker had had to face Strowman at WrestleMania, it would, you know, Jim Ross would have to redefine what bowling shoe ugly is. <laughs> it's not going to happen now, so don't worry I, about it. I have, I have a great idea for Braun Strowman at WrestleMania. Have Braun Strowman come out to the ring, or actually have Braun Strowman take on Sheamus. Have Braun Strowman come out to the ring with AJ Lee, and then he gives AJ Lee a little peck on the rope before the match starts, and then the <laughs> ref rings the bell, 
And Sheamus bro kicks him a pit. Well, him. AJ Lee's no longer with WWE anymore, so. But does that sound like something that happened once? That did happen once with uh, Daniel <laughs> Bryan, and <laughs> I, the crowd I, shed on it. It was awesome. That was such a. That was so disrespectful to Daniel Bryan. That like, was that's like, what the fuck are you doing? He had the title, dude. <laughs> yeah, eighteen seconds. Like, and and then you like you, you watch the Cody Rhodes and Big Show match where they go along. I'm like, this is the part where you could do the eighteen seconds. You just have Cody Rhodes be the champion, be cocky and shit about Big Show's WrestleMania run. Big Show hits him, knocks him out, wins the match. Is there a story about that? Like, oh, why that was eighteen seconds? Was somebody hurt? No, it was just it was just they had they didn't have to, they well they were figuring out the time. They were just like, dude, um, Triple Eight, some another match is gonna get longer. So basically, we got to give you guys eighteen seconds, dude. And they're the world title match. Yeah. Why Why wouldn't they just, like you said, use the Cody Rhodes and Big Show match for that? I don't know, but it wasn't just that match that really had problem. Like the Divas, there was going to be a Divas match and mixed yeah, tag, the, match, uh, and that got freaking canceled. So. And it should have. It was the fucking Dactyls. Yeah, it was the fucking Dactyls and T- Albert and freaking Tyrus, who, or Brodus Clay versus whoa, whoa, whoa. Steve Rhodes Scholars and the Bellas. Whoa. You got it wrong. And Lord Tensai. Yeah, Lord Tensai. Yeah. Lord Tensai. <laughs> okay. ten, yeah, the, the Tensai now. But yeah, Lord it was tensai. just. <laughs> so yeah, it was that match. It was going to be that match. And that match got canceled because other matches went are probably going to go longer. They they really looked at it. It really was a time thing. They should bring the Lord Tensai they did, back. Unfortunately, they did that stupid mu- mu- mama dance with Brodus Clay. So, also before the main event, you were like, "Why?" <laughs> well, they should bring Lord Tensai out. I'm well, wrong. honestly, Tensai's fine as Jason Albert, who's now running NXT. No, he's a, he's, head tra- he's a head trainer now. There's no reason to not make him Lord Tensai. <clears throat> no, he's he's a, he's Albert now. He's 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 done with the wrestling business. He's now a. Uh, a guy backstage uh, d- training everyone. Well, I saw Breaking Ground behind the scenes, mm-hmm. and there was a segment, <clears throat> which is why Bull De- Dempsey got released, and Lord Tensai came out in full Tensai garb, and um, he was supposed to lay down Bull Dempsey for Tensai at a, a house show, and Bull Dempsey kicked out of Lord Tensai's finisher, Sprayed Great Muda mist. In oh, head. you're you're just bullshit now. That I, ne- I watched take, take breaking him down. Up, that never happened. Rolled him up and put his legs in the rope like Tom Ziggler. The referee was in on. <laughs> never happened. That never happened. Thank God, oh. Bold MC was released by NXT. What a joke that guy was. Who was entertained by him? Well, the problem was they really wanted to do a big, big guy, a big brawler, but. Once Kevin Owens got signed, Bull Dempsey's use was – it was gone. There was no use for him. It depends Once, on what, when you watch NXT, right? Like <clears throat> Bull Dempsey was there for a while and was kind of a jobber. But then they like reset Bull Dempsey and Baron Corbin was coming up at the same time. And basically the two of them for six or seven weeks straight just effing killed their opponents and then fought each other. Well, that was be well. That was because Kevin Owens was already there, so they were already setting up Bull Dempsey to finally lose a match because they had already realized that uh, Bull Dempsey was uh, just they, they already had Kevin Owens. Why the f do they need two gimmicks of that? Well, to even say that Bull Dempsey is on the same planet, as I don't know, but that was it's the gimmick. It's the same gimmick. That's what it was. And once Kevin Owens came in. And you're like, well, we can't have Bull Dempsey be that. I would like Kevin Owens, like the Triple H era, to get the first 15 minutes of every show to just talk. That would be entertaining. He's oh. funny as hell. I think he's hysterical. Oh, yeah. Like, like, the marks always jerked off to Kevin Owens, but everything I heard was about his work rate and his matches. And he's just maybe one of the best mic workers I've seen in the last five or six years. He's that yeah, he's good. A good. He's a good mic worker too. Yeah, he's like, and it's not canned mic work. He's just quick on his feet. He's funny. He he oh, gets yeah. he gets the crowd irate. 
He's he's great. On, I mean, he's great. He's he's a WWE's really lucky to have him. Well, yeah, they are, and you got to remember him and Sami Zayn were like really close. So you could tell that probably some of some of those two's uh, egos, the uh, personalities rubbed off on each other. Yeah, true. Well, think about this though. TNA could have signed those guys the whole time. Oh, instead of instead of the yeah. old guys they keep signing. Yeah, but. How do you miss those two? Ego. <laughs> you want you think the old guys are gonna do do the money? They want money, and they got the wrong person. You know what that sounds like? Angry what? Tensai, two thousand fourteen. Hmm. Remember, Angry Tensai used to hate all the indie guys. <laughs> oh yeah, and now well, he loves them. Well, now that they're most of them are in WWE now, so. <laughs> but but they're everything you guys all said they were. They are. Oh well, yeah, all of them. I I don't I don't think I've seen one yet that hasn't delivered. Um, you know, you know what uh, WWE? You know Hideo Itami. People say like he's not performing well. I think yeah, before his injury, I thought he was doing a good job. Yeah, I thought he was too. It's just the mic work. He really. Of course. Yeah, the, I think the big thing, and I'm starting to think Apollo Cruz is not working. Yeah, I don't know about him. Man. I think that I think they're trying to do so much WWE mic work with him that his mic work's fallen because they're not giving him his own mic. They're not letting know, him man. be himself. The, 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 the big guys they have down there, I'm not overly. I, I don't mind Apollo Cruz. I don't mind Baron Corbin, but I don't see them being top guys in WWE. I just sad don't. Thing, think that. Sad thing is, I thought Mike Apollo Cruz, if done, Uha Nation, if done well. Could have been, could be a top guy, but the problem is that, that, that WWE has so changed his appearance, changed how he speaks and stuff. He's like a person. great athlete, but there's something missing with him. If you've seen some of his promos from the indie days, he's actually really good, but they, they, they've changed it a lot. Well, and they, take, they do that. <laughs> well, hey man, if Seth Rollins, when he started in WWE, one of the worst mic workers ever. Oh, but sure. I, look at him now. He's incredible. Oh, yeah. I mean, I can't believe. He, I mean, he improved so much. Well, a lot but, of that, that is, uh, yeah, you're, if you're able to get good in the business and if you're able to get good in time, they trust you more. Okay. Yeah. Paul Cruz in a situation where they don't trust him as much. They no. don't trust these guys. So you got to stick with the script. True. Most of the time, the script sucks. You know, but you know, you it doesn't. You don't have to be a great mic worker. I mean, look at Brock Lesnar; he's horrible on the mic. <laughs> well, he's got Paul Heyman. To be fair, well, that does Brock help. Lesnar literally is the best, most impactful worker of the last thirty years. How about that? Brock is a freak of nature. I will give why, you that. Why does his moves look so much crisper than everyone else's, though? You know what I mean? Like, there's a snap to all his moves. And and he's not working dangerous. People aren't getting hurt. Uh, I think a lot of things that Brock let what helped Brock Lesnar was um he was a division one he was a division one, division one NCAA wrestling wrestler. He was a legit wrestler, not this uh, sports entertainment stuff. He le- was legit doing wrestling moves. He um he he won the NCAA cha- national championship with uh, yeah. Shelton Benjamin. I, he, yeah, I, he has I the right, physique. He has the physique. I mean, you look at that guy, and some guys you look at it and you're like, they're taking steroids. Brock Lesnar, you look like he ain't taking steroids, but Jesus Christ, what the hell? He's just a big man. I mean, <laughs> he's, just, he's a, just really watch him work. Is he's really really good wrestler? Like really really good. I really enjoy watching yeah. him. Go, you know, and he tells a story in there, man. I mean, oh. I don't know. I love him. It does but help I, that he does get per- con- console from Paul Heyman, I'm sure. Paul Heyman gives him tips while on the road, and I'm sure Brock likes some of those tips. They must be really good friends in real life because Paul, oh, Heyman, yeah. Paul Heyman has really invested in wrestling again, and he was gone for a long time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're good friends. It shows. Yeah. Honestly, I, I'd say, too, you know, Ambrose, I really like the dynamic of Ambrose and Lesnar. I, just, I know we're not going to do more than this. It's too bad because there was money there. In my <laughs> yeah, there is. They, yeah, they're two lunatics, two just guys who are well, completely you know, batshit insane. You know what I realized tonight? 
and Brock doesn't like or respect anyone, mm-hmm. he's really amused and kind of admires Ambrose. Well, you got to admire somebody who's just like, well, you keep coming. Damn. Like, like when he's standing on a stage, he looked at he looked at him and he's like, is this guy serious? He really he really is serious. Like, I love that. The little things some of the guys do. There's certain guys that just do little things. Actually, yeah. one of my favorite things was when was the day well, it's like the Raw after Brock Lesnar won the world title from Cena, and Taman was talking about um, which keeps saying Brock Lesnar. He's like, do that again. I love that. Uh, it's like, uh, do that again. I love it when you say that. <laughs> I love it when I'm you say you, man, Brock's one of those guys who does the little things. Ambrose, one of those guys, is a little. I even think Rusev is one of those guys that does the little things that really entertain me. And you could, th- those are the guys I really like, you know? Yeah. Cause you, they're really trying. They're really trying out there, you know? Like, you could kind of look, like Miz is, like Miz, for instance, is trying to be like what Chris Jericho was. And it's like, yeah. when you watch those two side by side tonight, even though Jericho's not even trying, it's like, why do we even have Miz out there when we have Jericho still on TV? That is true. That is true. Miz was just getting ignored at the time. Jericho's like, oh, do the set, do the set. Let's do a highlight. Come on, do, do, do it. Do it. He's not even talking about Miz. Miz is so uncomfortable out there. I don't know when that changed, but if you look at some of his stuff from when he was the champion, I think the problem is he got he got booked like shit, and, and he lost. And that happened. That that ha- that lose your confidence when you're. Like plummeting down, so yeah. that that does destroy your confidence. Absolutely does. He could get released. It's oh, possible. It's possible because they're he's probably not cheap either. You know, because he's he's a reality star. He was a champion. He, he's a. I wonder how he would do in a TNA or something like uh, that. Not good. I don't think he'd do good in TNA. No. no. Um. I think I I actually watched a ride along. The first one it was Miz and Dolph Ziggler. The only they they were both boring on the road together, but the only highlight was Miz talking about it. Maurice. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, he's talking about his wife, and he's like, well, "Well, I got a dog. I got I got a cat from a stray cat. I adopted him. We called the dogs uh Spice and La- Spice and Latte." And then he's like, "Well, <laughs> Maurice gets on the fo- gets on Facetime, and she says, "Well, I found another cat." And he's like. I'm putting my foot down. We are not getting another cat. And Maurice is like, too late. And she unveils pumpkin. Oh no! So they, yes, yes, they have a one of dogs and two cats named Pumpkin Spice and Latte. That is hysterical. Well, <laughs> I, I'll ask you this. I mean, we, we're we're coming up on an hour. I mean, we, so you know, before we get out of here, who do you think is going to win the number one contender match? Roman Reigns, I think they've uh, clearly are uh, so establishing Roman Reigns to do it. Yeah, me too. It's too bad, but it's it's the writing's on the wall. Yeah. You know what? I think Triple. I, I do think Triple H. I, I call me crazy, but I do think he's going to walk out of WrestleMania with. Better no, life. I don't think. I don't think he is. Honestly, I, I don't think he is. That was the whole point of this was but to why? get Roman Reigns a Mania win. Why though? Because they want Roman Reigns to be the de- guy. They do. And winning at WrestleMania makes you the guy? Winning at WrestleMania helps. Winning the WrestleMania main event helps you uh, establish you. Yeah. Although, the you, you can almost say that, although Miz won the WrestleMania main event, and look where he is. Rock really but, won that one. That, to be fair, yeah. That really was basically, Miz was just, oh yeah, he won the match, but Rock just threw his ass out immediately afterwards. The Rock Cena feud is one of the most underrated feuds in WWE history. I mean, I I can't I mean they were incredible and no one talks about it. Well, probably it probably cuz right now it's just it's still too current. Uh, a lot of too current stuff is not really going to be talked about greatly. I I just but, couldn't believe the first one when it happened that it was actually going to happen and Rock was in the condition he was in. Oh I, yeah. I never, I can't remember being that excited for a match since, since I was, since I watched WrestleMania 6 as a young child watching Warrior take on Hogan. That's how I felt about that match. <laughs> and I wanted Cena to be. You mean, what about Rock versus Hogan? Or Rock to be Cena. Um, Rock versus Hogan, I, I didn't believe, I didn't realize at the time how big it was going to be 
until the match started, right? Oh. So it to to me it was just like the continuation of Rock getting hit by a truck on Raw, oh. and then all of a sudden Hulk Hogan or Hollywood Hogan goes out to the ring in Toronto Skydome, and all of a sudden he's not Hollywood Hogan anymore. He's Hulk Hogan, and he's taking yeah. on Rock. And I did not expect that. So that was one of those moments where, you know, I'm sitting there. I remember I was at my friend Randy's house, and I'm like, oh, my God. Is he going to be Hulk Hogan for this match? And when the crowd turned at the very beginning, in the first third set, I was like, that was unmatched. That I was that, that was the best. I would say that's a funny. That was the best moment I've seen ever. Well, it sucks now that Daniel Bryan's now retired. So it is too bad, man. He's he's a superstar, but you know what, man? He actually for the better. It's for the better that he retires. Dude, I don't honestly, man. I like him, but I don't want to see him like die out there, man. It's oh not- no, oh no. Like like as soon as I as soon as after Mania when he was. Soon as the after he comes back from a neck injury, he wins the Intercontinental title at WrestleMania, and like a few weeks later, he's done again. With and, and you're like, that's it. You that's just it. have to go. That's it. That's it, man. You, it, he, there's no you. There's no way they can trust you ever again. You just had to forfeit two belts at Mania after Mania. Yeah, I mean the, the first one was freak, but the second one. <clears throat> that's it you know well the first one wasn't a freak of injury either you well you could chalk it up to just years of pain and maybe he'll get he'll get better about his condi- watching himself and then the, the the concussion you're like shit this guy's injury prone true true well this guy's out his age he's injury prone well it was a big night for him it was a big night nonetheless but i thought raw overall was 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 lacking at best but um I want to thank you for coming on the air with us, buddy. No problem. All right. Well, um, to everybody, we're, we'll see you on the air next week. Uh, we, thanks for bearing with us. Hopefully, Vic can um, stay awake next week. So um, for Seth Drake and myself, Angry Tensai, thank you very much. Kill a Kev. Take us home, baby. Bye.